there we go record so welcome 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 everybody who's here uh sure is joining me and we are getting right into it because sure came a little earlier and we were talking about things and uh where we're going to continue with freedom from anxiety and worry is right on the section of module six that deals with vocabulary and the importance and the power of vocabulary so sure you started to talk about anticipation and the, the, the importance and the nuance and the specificness of anticipation and its connection to expectation and how those two are different. So if you'd please just re recap, just just say again what you were saying. You know, you started and yeah. I didn't get all of it. I want to get all of it. This is oh, very cool. Very okay. cool stuff. Well, so what um in a new parenting situation, not new, but in a parenting situation, um, I have been learning to anticipate that uh, a meltdown or rage or these behaviors uh, can happen. The potential yeah. is always there, yeah. but I don't ever want to put out the expectation that they yes. are going to happen. Yes, yes. So I yes. anticipate, which means I'm at this level of above mindfulness, it's beyond mindfulness. It's just this yeah. complete immersion in awareness, yeah. not immersion in um, in the emotionality of the situation or you know that leading up to or constant stress. But what I've decided to do is just it's a really positive form of being hyper vigilant. That's the yeah. best way I can describe it. So yeah. what I decided yeah. to do is an anticipation. We can anticipate that something is going to happen. Be aware of it, but we don't yeah. have to expect it. Does, yeah. I, does that make sense? Oh, totally, totally. So in other words, when we look at this really, really, really carefully, right? You are utilizing uh, anticipation and expectation differently. And what does this yeah. mean? You can say, well, isn't that really the same thing? No, because there's a different intent involved right mm -hmm. when you anticipate yeah. it's you anticipating because you were given a clue a hint uh, an indication that something is going to follow you were given the start of a potential pattern or in 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 the case that you've come to see a, a likely pattern so the anticipation yeah. doesn't just start out of nothing it starts as a continuation of recognition of you being observant of something, correct? Yes, and this, yes. this is this is the the deeper um, um, meaning of anticipate, right? It is to project a pattern, right? You anticipating right. based on what went before. An expectation, on the other hand, this is not in the moment, but based on past behavior being assumed to now perhaps happen. It may or may yes. not, right? And that's a very, very, very powerful thing. So, you know, if, if you typically grumpy in the morning, you know, uh, right? Or whatever, you know, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, whatever, wife, husband, right? And you, you start to expect that. You might end up getting that grumpiness simply because you've been expecting it. Yes, I know I've been grumpy for the last couple of months, but, you know, that was then. Today, I don't feel that way anymore. Whatever it is has left me now. I'm, I'm free of this. But if you keep expecting it, you can create it. So my point is that even though expectations might be based on a, a solid pattern, does not mean they are legitimate to keep expecting. Yeah. Whereas right. anticipation right. is very different, right? Anticipation yes. is we are looking at the pattern. Let me just say hello here. So we've got wonderful. Yeah. Hello, Norma. This is wonderful. I'm very, very happy to see you here. Hello, Ramsey. I'm most happy to see you here also. And hello, Sandy Sue. This is fantastic. I'm really thrilled to see you here as well, Sandy Sue. Uh, uh, before we go further, uh, I, 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 I know Norma's okay, uh, simply because I uh, chatted on text with Norma earlier. So hello, Norma. And I'm glad you're bringing your joy and wonderfulness and love here to, to this. This is fantastic. And, and Ramsey, uh, also, I, I'll just assume, um, but, you know, last time you were here, Sandy Sue, you did mention that you were in a dip. Now, I want to comment on this and I'm pleased, I, I would like to get some feedback from you, please, Sandy Sue, because I don't want to expect that you still are simply because you were then. 
I expect and imagine that you aren't. However, I also don't want to assume that, right? Because that can also, if you are still in a dip, I don't want to be anticipating or expecting uh, uh, right. something which I have no evidence for whatsoever. But also at the same time, I don't want to be insensitive if you are. So I'm really keen to know how you are, Sandy Sue. Since right. we're talking about yeah. anticipation and expectation, here's right. a case where I have no data, right? And only it was right. one incident for Sandy Sue. It may be a pattern for her. It may be an ex exception. How do I know? I cannot either expect or anticipate, right? I have nothing right. to work now, with. But we can right. also, when it comes to expectation, um, as it ties into anxiety, the way I see it anyways, is we can fully expect that somebody or something is going to be or happen uh, in a certain way, like you talked about that pattern, um, we can cue our anxiety. Exactly, exactly. We can cue exactly. it just based on exactly. expectation. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And that's the, that's the danger of both expectation and to a certain extent, anticipation. Right, we, we must be absolutely yes. mindful of that third partner, which is queuing, which is what mm -hmm. I was doing there now. I was being very excruciatingly, exquisitely mindful to not queue in any way myself when it comes to how Sandy Sue may be right now. You know, I hope yeah. Sandy Sue is good, but I can't assume one way or the other. I have no idea of knowing. Uh, you know, the same thing for for Ramsey, right? I don't know. I mean, I'm going by pattern with Ramsey and he said, hello, you know, okay. That's nice, that's what he typically does. You know, a nice high from Sandy, so I have to assume all is good. But, you know, the high could also be, you know, he's just introducing, saying I'm here and I have stuff I want to talk about. So, uh, oh, can she turn her mic up a bit, please, says Norma. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Um, I can sure Sit try. Closer. Sit closer to it. Yeah. Okay. That's I can. Thing. Yes. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure sorry. There, there, there. That's, 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 that's much better. That is much better. Okay. Thank you for saying, okay. Norma. Because, you know, yeah. um, um, on, on, on my Zoom, um, on my one mic, I've, I've got this new headset now, which I'm very happy about. Which It's a Bluetooth headset. And it's got a little Bluetooth USB that I plug into the computer and it works like a charm, right? Because my computer doesn't, doesn't have built in uh, Bluetooth. Um, but, but if I use the mic that's on the camera, uh, I have to go look in my settings and under video settings, and I have to pull the bar up because it's not automatically uh, set to maximum. So mm -hmm. look in audio settings. See, even now it's set to halfway. So there we go. Just for you, Norma, I'll set the microphone to maximum. Is that better, Norma? Can you hear me? Can you hear me better too, sure? I oh, yeah, I, I can, yeah, I, yeah, no, I heard, I heard you just <laughs> right, earlier. All right, all right, wonderful. Um, all right, so, uh, so my ears so old. <laughs> yeah, I mean, your ears are way older than the rest of you, Norma. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tease Norma a little bit. I got to tease Norma a little bit. Now, all right, fantastic, says Norma. Brilliant. Uh, Sandy Sue, I'm keen to hear from you. I am most keen to hear from you. So just to go back to where we were talking about, um, that we were on this point of, uh, we're talking about vocabulary and power conceptions. And for, mm -hmm. for, for me, and also for sure, uh, anticipation is a vital part of our vocabulary because it is a power conception. Expectations are important, but I wouldn't classify expectation necessarily as a power conception. It could oh, be, either. it's how you use it though, right? So yes, okay, uh, expectations can cause us lots of problems, but I suppose if we expect good things, that's also queuing good things. So yes, it can be utilized as a power conception. But anticipation, why is anticipation specifically so potent? Because like in Scher's case, She's observing behavior of somebody who is, let's just say, uh, somewhat hypersensitive. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll be very gentle yes. here, right? That, that's yeah. somewhat of a euphemism a to say, yeah, it's somewhat of a euphemism, but we will just say, okay, somewhat hypersensitive. Now, if she is not paying close attention, 
she'll miss those cues. They can be subtle, the starting points of the thread of the pattern. But one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64. If those things happen in, in, uh, in a microsecond, right? Uh, you can divide that into, into uh, uh, if you take a second and divide it into 30th, which isn't all that long, you, you're still able to actually comprehend that. If you mm -hmm. keep that going of one, two, four, at the end of 30, you're getting to a billion. Okay. So, so my point is, right, that if you anticipate, he, he, sometimes things can, can escalate really quickly because to go from one to a billion, it's 30 double ups. Yeah? Yeah. So is, that, is that really astounding? It, it's really, yes. really, really astonishing. Uh, it, it just blows my mind, right? 30 double ups gives you. Now, of course, you know, if you're talking money, this is hard to do because the, the bigger you get, the harder it becomes a double up. But when you're going to something like rage, no problem, yeah. right? This thing can ramp up and go from zero to infinity just like that, you know, in a few seconds. So sure, paying attention to those initial, the one, two, four, while it's still gentle, that's where she has opportunity to actually be of influence. By the time it gets to the middle of the thing or three quarter way in, when you're starting to get into the, the, the thousands and the 10,000, 100,000, the millions, then it's too late because now you've got real rage. But when you've got 16 or 32 rage, that's not a lot. That's still manageable. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's a start of a slippery slope. So anticipation here, what does it do for sure? It enables sure to deal with something in a timely manner. Yes. Right? That's absolutely. huge. That is absolutely monumentally, profoundly, massively huge. Correct? Mm -hmm. so it's a huge, huge, huge deal. So not only that, though, but when you can anticipate, it also enables you to save time. Uh, right? Save time, save emotions, save, exactly. save everything. Exactly. I mean, it saves exactly. In, in, in other words, you can compress time by through anticipation. Yes. And I'll give you a good example, right? So, so all of you out there, Ramsey, uh, Sandy Sue, Norma, and did, did Sandy Sue leave us? I hope not. I, I am keen to hear how you are, Sandy Sue. I really want to know how you are. Uh, please, uh, it would really help me a lot to know how you are. Um, but uh, I'm asking, and anybody who's listening who hasn't commented, right? Because there's many sometimes who do. I only know if you're listening, if you comment or like. Uh, but anyway, anybody who's listening. So next time you go uh, walk up to your car, right? Pay attention to what you do, right? You're, gonna, you're looking to go and drive in your car and go away. Or to your front door, either way, right? When do you take your keys out? Now that you're aware of it, you're likely going to take your keys out before you get to the, the door, yeah? Yes. Why? Because it saves you time. I'm walking. Why do I need to stop at the door, then reach into my pocket or my purse, root around for the keys and take it out? You know, this is 10 seconds that, that you never get back. Okay, it's 10 seconds, but add those 10 seconds up in the day and do this, you know, 100 times, you've suddenly got, right? You've got 1,000 seconds. That's, that's a significant chunk of time. So, uh, and that's only if you're saving 10 seconds, right? You may, may be more. So anticipation, this is a very, very simple application of it to make the point, right? But of course, when it comes to getting your keys out, this is a safety precaution, right? Uh, most uh, muggings in a, in a parking lot at the, at the supermarket or the mall or whatever, uh, that's when they occur, right? The, the mugger will watch you. And when you stop at your door and you, you stop to reach into your bag and rummage around there and get your keys out, that's when you're not being aware around you and that's when you're vulnerable, yeah? So, yes. so this has got, got this anticipation. You know, while I'm walking, I don't have to be looking in the purse. I can be fiddling around because I'm not in a hurry to find. I can feel my way and I can still be looking around me, yeah? And also, of course, I'm walking anyway. It's time I'm now doing two things at once, yeah? I'm walking and chewing gum in the same time, in other words. I'm walking and finding my keys at the same time. We can do this. It's not that big a deal, right? It's very easy to do if we set our minds to do it. So anticipation helps us to do these things, to multiply our, our, our value of our time and to also make our actions be more utilizable and more effective. Now, think of it this way, right? 
uh, in, in the value of anticipation in exactly the same way as sure is using it. Uh, think of it when you in a situation, right? You're in a, you're in a, you've got guests over and a party or you're at a business meeting or whatever, and you start to see somebody getting all ruffled. You can stop it before it becomes a problem. You can head it off before it's an issue, right? Because you've seen yeah. it, you see where it's going. Furthermore, if you sitting there at your office, la, 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 I'm doing my work, la, 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 ta, ta, whatever I'm doing, right? Okay, I'm just pretending to be a happy employee. I don't know if any of you go la, la, la while you're working, but well, I kind of do sometimes. But, <laughs> but anyway, you, you get my point, right? You're in your little yes. bubble, you know, you, you're thinking of your happy thoughts while you're working away there and you, you're just in your cheerful bubble. And all of a sudden your boss comes and, and dumps on you for whatever you did, you know, some nincompoopery that you did of some kind, right? Some transgression, whatever you did. And you're like, oh my God, and I, they, just, they just come and dump on you and you just burst you out of your bubble. This is kind of a traumatic thing. And you, you, you usually in those situations, you're quite unprepared for it and you don't know how to deal and you just react because you've had no time, right? To think and to respond. But... I'm sitting here and I, I see in my, in, in my wonderful monitor here, I can see, oh, there's my boss coming behind me. I'm seeing them in the reflection of the monitor. Oh, boss looks like it's just a swallowed a thundercloud. That, that doesn't look good. Okay, well, maybe I'm going to get it now. Boss is going to come and dump on me. All right, well, I'm ready for you, boss. Come along. And now when the boss comes, you're like, yes, boss, yes, boss. Okay, you're wonderful, boss. You're the best boss ever. You are just like the wondrous, most magnificent, giant, enormous, fantastic boss ever. And the boss is all happy and they go away, right? You prepared. Okay, I'm not saying you need to blow smoke up your boss's butt, but <laughs> that sometimes is all you can do, you know, because maybe the boss is just having a bad day and, you know, because they're the boss, they feel they're entitled to come and dump on somebody. And because you're a nice person, they choose you, right? But if you're prepared for it, you can deal with it. This is my point with anticipation. It allows us to set our mood. Same thing with you, right, sure? If you get this rage coming at you just out of the blue, yeah, and you busy happily la la lying about, it takes you aback and it kind of sets you back and you have that adjustment time and then it's very hard to deal with it. But if you can set your mood ahead of time, now you're entering into this engagement deliberately. That changes everything. When it's undeliberate, unexpected, ah, that throws me for a loop. But when I can do it deliberately, this is huge. Exactly, Ramsey, to, to make things work and take proper actions, right? To give us that time, it's anticipation is the trigger for preparation. Exactly, 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 exactly. And it's huge. It's a massive big deal when we can set ourselves. I, I don't know really of another word to use in place of setting oneself, right? Yes, it is a preparing, but it's a, it's a particular kind of a preparing. It's setting your mood, setting your attitude, setting your boundaries, setting your resistance, setting your uh, uh, thick skinnedness, right? Typically, you know, I'm very open to things. So my, my, I set my, the level of my skin's thickness to very thin because I want to feel and hear what's going on. I don't want to be thick skinned because then when I hear my favorite tune there, I'm not going to hear all the magic of, of, of my favorite uh, singer, right? Or singers. I've got, I got zillions of favorites. They're all my favorites. I try not to pick one above the other because then I limit them. So anyway, uh, but this, this now I set the sensitivity factor way down so that whatever boss comes, it just bounces. But not so far that I'm being obnoxious and I'm not listening and not paying attention because, well, they may have a point. And when the boss says, like, hey, I say, yeah, boss, sorry, you know, I, I don't know what happened there. You know, I just had a brain fart or whatever the reason is, you know. And then, well, yeah. okay. You know, so then you can deal with it yeah. appropriately. And, yeah. and it's astonishing Without when you, anxiety. exactly, exactly. And here's the key though, right? When you have that anxiety, right? You now cue the boss and say, oh man, you know, uh, this, uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of talking to Syl about this thing. And well, you know, I didn't think they were so much at fault. Yes, I'm just kind of a bit miffed because it, it messed up my sales report and I'm going to look bad to the higher ups, but you know, it wasn't entirely their fault. But oh man, Syl is like really worried about this and he's looking really like uh, really stressed by this. Hmm, there must be more going on here. Maybe he's more guilty than I thought he was. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yep, so, yep. Yeah, but you know. Uh, to me, that anxiety yeah. blocks that preparedness or that. Exactly. You, know, you were talking exactly. about. Um, exactly. Exactly. Or being aware. Exactly. So 
when I think exactly. of anticipation, I think yeah. of it as um, it's almost like a step above being yeah. hyper aware. <clears throat> exactly. So like I said, the key for me anyways, the exactly. key is absolutely do not expect, anticipate, but do not expect. Exactly. Because um, when you take away that expectation, all you're doing is you're just making yourself very aware of all the possibilities. Exactly. Um, the possible can become even more possible or exactly. in actuality, if we yeah. expect. Yeah. We don't want to turn possibility into probability. Right? No, so exactly. since we're talking about vocabulary, understanding this difference, you say, ah, so don't get all nerdy on us here now. Don't get all technical here. Right? Don't get all academic. I'm not any of those things, right? I'm simply no. saying this is important. This is important. We can't have our aversion to technicalities and nerdiness and academics. Yeah, I'm not a great fan of academics, and please don't call me an academic either. I take great umbrage to that uh, because I'm about practical application. And the practicality, mm -hmm. the practicality of understanding the difference between Possibility and probability is huge, huge, huge. Yes. And that's exactly what we're saying here. You don't want to turn yeah. a possibility that you may be more guilty than you actually are into a probability for your boss by looking guilty, by looking stressed, by looking worried. Yeah. Now, it yes. doesn't mean that if you are, that you must go and cover it up. If you are, and then just acknowledge it. Right. And, and you know, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll give you guys a, a, a tip and a secret here, right? Dealing with bureaucracies, right? When you, when you go to the bureaucracy and you filled out your form wrong and you've got the wrong form and you've done everything wrong and, and the poor harried lady at the other side of the counter or gentleman, um, uh, typically I've always had experience with ladies. So that's what I remember. And almost every time it's been this poor, uh, poor lady who's really stressed and bothered and annoyed because everybody gets it wrong, right? And then when she says, well, you've got the wrong form, then they come with a big, long story and now it's not their fault and now it's everybody else's fault and how it's basically the, uh, the, the bureaucracy's fault, et cetera, et cetera. But if you just said, oh, man, I'm so sorry, I really messed up, uh, you know, and you acknowledge and genuinely and earnestly say, well, I'm sorry, I messed up. You know, what happens to that lady? Immediately they change. Oh, never mind, dear. I know everybody does it. And then they, they make an effort to help you. They didn't help any of the mm -hmm. other hundred people because none of those other hundred people were willing to be honest and earnest about actually messing up, but just own it, yeah. just own it. Say, I'm sorry. Yes, I messed up. You know, I don't know what I was thinking or, you know, ah, man, it's so complicated, whatever, you know, you don't even have to give a reason just have to say, I'm really sorry. I messed up, you know, and then they help you. And you know, what's fascinating to me because you are this exception. I've had them break the rules on their side in order to help me out. <laughs> yeah yeah it's just yeah. too incredible it's too magical you know again yeah. going against the expectations of how the world works we think the world works the way it does mm. and we know how mm. it works but man it doesn't absolutely doesn't it doesn't work the way we think it does right i've had right. you know the, the the typical bureaucrats who are so hell bent on 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 rules and regulations and it has to be this way it has to be. i've seen them break them six ways from sunday every way you can imagine without blinking an eye it's too amazing. Uh -huh. It's too amazing. When That's it what, was appropriate. When it was appropriate. Yeah. yeah. Well, there, there's Incredible. something else too I wanted to please, bring up please, about please. expectation versus expectation. Um, when I break it down, I, I just, you know, kind of, I write down things a lot. So I break myself yeah, a lot of notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anticipation versus expectation on a piece of paper. Um, to me, anticipation says may, maybe. Expectation says it will. Yes. Um, and yes. When I think if something is going to happen and it brings me anxiety, that lowers my self-esteem and my confidence, which yeah. rocks my inner safety. Yeah. Anticipation yeah. helps me hold on to that inner safety, to that grounding, because then I can say, well, all right, I can be preemptive. I can prepare. I can, um, you know, I can exactly. be aware all of those things, which then that's doing what? That's solidifying that sense of inner safety inside of yes. Me, um, yes. where I know that, okay, he may rage. And if he does, I'm ready. I know what there to do. There you go. There I can you follow go. my own protocol. There you go. Um, wonderful. Where if I expect wonderful. that he's going to, I've just thrown the whole thing into the- Oh, yes. The and now you, you're a party to it. Now yes. you're a party yes. to and it so then, and you didn't then, want to be. And that expectation can exacerbate the situation. 
Exactly. Every single time. Exactly. Exactly. Time. Exactly. Um, exactly. Exactly. Uh, especially. So that's, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. I was just thinking too, like, you know, in terms of your example with, with the boss, yeah. you know, yeah. we all get a little anxious when the boss comes because it's kind of like right. what, you know, the mom right. or dad telling you we didn't do a job well. Right. Um, and we carry that through the same thing, that authority. Yeah. Figure. We get afraid of them where we don't yeah. need to be. Exactly. You know, we can instead, but we can manage our anxiety and worry just by understanding what those differences in the two terms are. And those un that understanding, to me anyways, has created such a world of difference in my own yeah. self-conception. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now, in a situation that you have, right, since we now associated uh, queuing with anticipation uh -huh. and expectation, because both form a very big part of queuing yes and to understand yeah. this queuing and and what do we mean by queuing here it is where you are eliciting you suggesting a particular behavior based on what you're doing so you're setting a pattern you're setting an energy uh, you're almost forcing sometimes a, a behavior in others because queuing is like expectation taken to the ultimate right like when i'm mm -hmm. on the, the word comes from when you you're on stage with actors right and it's your cue right uh, you know when the when the sometimes the they'll even off stage you know they'll drop uh, yes. make a noise or say something and, and you know oh this is your cue to go on right it's a signal right, to act right, right? so uh um, we can that cue queuing, others behaviors by a word uh, exactly by a word. not just by a simple word we can cue via attitude we can cue yes. via expectation. We can cue via assumption. Mm -hmm. We can cue in many, many different ways. We can cue because yes. we have a very strong belief about somebody. And this is a mm -hmm. very terrible expectation to have or a belief to have, right? Mm -hmm. So in other words, I, I'm cueing you to, to, to be a lousy boss because I believe, or an aggressive boss, because I really believe you are. Now, all right, with a boss, it doesn't always work that way, but sometimes it can. But more it happens with somebody who is taking their cue from you, right? So in yeah. other words, when people look up to you, uh, you uh, in a leadership position, you're in an influential position, etc. right? So that person now is looking to you for how they should behave. And boy, yes. is should ever a ridiculously, ridiculously, ridiculously powerful concept. Yes. Right. And word. Right and everything so this should and now like i said in this case of 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 with the rage right if you expect rage if somebody is inherently deep down a good person and they believe they should do what you want them to do if you expect them to rage right uh, some some parts of our brain are like a computer they don't think they just do Right. So yes, then that yes. good part is going to say, well, they want me to rage. They expect me to rage. This is what I should do. And therefore, my goodness says I must rage. Mm -hmm. That it, or there's but then there's also the other a little bit of a, a twist in this situation. Um, say I don't expect it. But yeah. in, in this person's case, they can't read the cues. They can't yes. read emotional cues. Yes. yes. No That's... idea what they mean. So Correct. to them, their pattern, their habit is, well, you know, X plus Y equals Z. So I should be acting like. Exactly. 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 And now you get complications because now they're acting on habit and pattern and all yes. they know. And uh, because they don't know what to do, they feel um you know out of it they feel ignorant they right. feel foolish uh, etc so now and what, that yeah it feeds on itself so, yeah it does so what happens in that situation that's why i said sometimes the word i have to be extremely conscientious of yes, the words that i choose to use as well as the attitude yes. that i put with them. yes if i'm to say if i have yes. to say sure whatever you're gonna anyway well that's yes. gonna cue if yes. i say well, what do you think? Yes, yes, and yes. Think about it. Yes. So we come to one of my favorite terms, right? And almost everybody I know, if you ask them, would you like to be smarter? They almost always say yes. Sure, why not? You know, that would be cool. 
right? Well, yeah, mm -hmm. I'll give you I'll give you a tip and a clue how to become smarter. Learn to pay attention to implications. If you there can you learn to see the implications of things, you're going to become smarter just like that. Massively mm -hmm. smarter overnight, right? And this is a mm -hmm. huge, huge, massive, profound, awesome, fantastic skill to see the implications. Yeah. So look yeah. at what we're doing now. So when I start to cue somebody with my beliefs, my expectations, my attitudes, my moods, what are the implications? And we looked at the implications. We looked at this, the implications of, of somebody um, assuming that you want them to do things based on should. Yes, that's an implication. Now, understanding yeah. that allows you to, to, to see how their behavior is being connected. It's about implications. Anticipation. Isn't anticipation exactly taking a behavior, an action, a something, and saying, ah, I've got a, a start of a pattern. What is the implication of this pattern? Where is it going, right? So there you get yes. anticipation. Now, if you take anticipation, which is in the immediate, it's like one step, two step, and, and really you're anticipating the implication, which is likely to be so. When you go and take ex anticipation and you really stretch it out into the uh, far into the future, then you get extrapolation, which says mm. you're taking this pattern and this pattern may or may not hold, but this is the most likely thing to hold. So extrapolations, you can rely on much less than an anticipation, right? right. Um, so mm. anticipations have a high degree of accuracy, not inevitable, but high degree. So, uh, so Ramsey says, uh, let's, let me scroll up here. Norma says first, um, yeah, anticipation for proper to make things easier. And Norma says, yes, hearing not always same as listening precisely. We have to listen with our minds mm. as well as ears and eyes. Exactly. So I really make this distinction between capital H hearing and capital L listening and lowercase hearing and lowercase listening. When you hear and you, you don't listen, things just come into your ears. But if you also just listen without hearing, likewise, you don't mm -hmm. get the full picture, right? I can be listening right. to you, but I, I can fail to hear you. So the two words mm -hmm. have nuanced meanings to them, right? Because, for instance, when I say, well, I listen to you, like the husband listening to the wife, right? He's watching the football game. He's listening to the wife. And the wife says, you're not listening to me. He says, yes, I am. So what did I just say? And he says, well, you just said that, you know, I've got to go to the bank. And then I go, and he repeats verbatim whatever she said, right? And she, 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 she like scowls at him. Yeah, well, you know, uh, it seems like you're listening, but I know you weren't. Because he really wasn't. His attention was on the game. He wasn't paying attention to the fullness of what he's saying. He can repeat the words verbatim. But if that wife, and by the way, if you are that wife or that husband whose wife's not listening to them either way, right? Or children or whoever. If you're in that situation where, some, where you know somebody's not actually listening to you and you're not being heard, capital L listening and capital H hearing, and, they, and you say to them, oh, you're not listening to me, you're not hearing me, right? And they say, yes, I am. And, and then you say, oh, what did I just say? And then they say it back to you. Say, oh, well, well, wait a second. Don't say it verbatim. That's a memory trick. Say it in your own words, what I said. Now we're going to see the test if they were actually listening. Of course, hubby watching the game is lost then, right? And he's in the kennel and he's living outside for a while, right? He's in 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 uh -huh. in hubby in hubby jail, because of course he won't be able to do this, right? Because he really was well. listening, right? He just used a memory trick. He was just regurgitating, which is not the same thing as actually listening. So if 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 you get into the and that's the, in other words, what you ask them for then in this case, wifey asking hubby. Is asking for a repeat back. Yes. And that's what a repeat back is saying something in your own words. It's very, very, very powerful. It's really huge because it, it really demonstrates to you that you've actually heard and listened. Not that you believe you've heard and absorbed and understood, but that you actually have. Right. So it's a way of checking. Yeah. And if you can now feed that back to somebody uh, who the originator of the content. You can check with them. Is this what you meant? Now, we 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 often do uh, when we when we hear and listen to something, we kind of make sense out of it, and but then that's our sense. Now, which isn't a bad thing, but that doesn't necessarily mean we know what the person was trying to say. 
So when I do a repeat back, my objective is to say, did I hear you accurately? That's the repeat back. My takeaway is when I say, ah, what you were saying resonates with me. Uh, you know, this is really cool. I'm going to use this. Or I say, I understand where you're coming from. You know, yes, you think Jack Jones is the bomb and the be all and end all of everything, but yeah, Jack Jones, he leaves me a little bit empty. And you say, what? Are you serious? Really? How can you not love Jack Jones? Well, all right. I'm Jack Jones is a singer, just, just for those who don't know. Right? Uh, my point is that, that when, we, when we, we, we can understand why somebody loves him, I can say, well, you know, you love Jack Jones because he's very um, dramatic and melodramatic and he's got soothing and loving and kind and gentle or whatever. Right? But it doesn't work for me. All right. Well, it doesn't work for me. Who knows why? So I can, I can understand where you're coming from without necessarily agreeing or disagreeing. And this is something, mm. it's a big fallacy that we get into, this getting stuck in agreeing and disagreeing. And those aren't the only two options, people. Black and white are not the only options. There's a zillion colors all over the show. Learn to pay attention to the colors. And when we truly uh, practice these skills, we learn to hear and listen to color, not just black and white. Very powerful. Yeah. Very, very, very powerful. So it's a huge, huge factor. Furthermore, when I hear you, I may hear you, right? And, and, and you know, sure, I make every effort to hear you. However, I also make an effort to make sure that you, sure, in particular now, and, and anybody really, but you know, since you're here now, I'm using you as the example, I make every effort to make sure that you feel heard. It's a difference, yeah? I yeah, may yeah, hear you. That doesn't mean that you feeling heard. Sometimes I've heard you and I, I get what you're saying, but I, I just kind of hold on there because I see that you're not feeling heard yet. You need to say the thing again and in another way and backwards and upside down. And eventually you're going to get feel heard when it's out, when it's out of you, right? And you've got yes, enough yes. feedback to, to confirm to you that, okay, yes, he's, he says that and it seems like he's, he's hearing me, but I need to be sure. Right, so you you get this mm -hmm. confirmed proof and double proof sometimes and triple doesn't matter. It depends on the individual, but feeling heard and being heard not the same thing. And just since right. there's there's many many people in in group who who are engaged in coaching, and and also who are sometimes being coached or in therapy, and I feel this understanding of the difference is absolutely essential if you are going to be in any kind of coaching or if you are in any way a friend and a good friend to others, making sure that you make the effort to make sure that your friend or partner or loved one or whoever feels heard, not is heard. Yes, you want that is is important, but the feel is more important, right? It's critical. So, right. you know, persist until you know they feel heard. Uh, this is a massive, massive point. And again, we're getting into fine distinctions because this is our theme today, vocabulary yes. and power conceptions. There's power in these conceptions like capital H hearing, right? As opposed to just mm -hmm. regular hearing. You know, I'm hearing the wind, but am I hearing the wind? See the difference? Just in that emphasis. Yeah. When I hear the wind, oh my goodness, I would recommend this, right? So... Early morning, right? Just just when it's just after sunrise, right? Uh, in that that uh, that first part of the morning, when it's still typically relatively still outside, and you know, unless it's a windy day now, but on most days in the mornings it's fairly it's fairly calm out, right? Go outside right. and make an effort to not listen to the wind, but to hear the wind. Capital H, yeah. You are going to be a found it right little breezes and you're going to be astonished at how if you do this at least consistently uh, over a period of time how every day what you thought the mood the vibe the feel was is different you're going to be completely astonished at how much mood and emotion and and vibe and energy and communication you are going to pick up from the breezes now somebody may say well so you know i don't really believe in that stuff uh, etc um but uh but it makes no difference right mm -hmm. hear me out here right i'm being very sophisticated here i'm not necessarily saying that the wind and the breeze has these emotions 
I'm simply saying, if you make an effort to hear, you are going to hear things, whether they come from the wind or from just fragments of emotion that drift on the wind like smells do, because you can pick up smells too, right? That are, you know, are not close to you because let's say you're standing like out in nature and it's open and it's like here in Arizona where there's no trees to hide stuff. You can clearly see, right? You can see, well, you know, I'm smelling uh, tobacco and there's nobody around me smoking or anything, right? Uh, or whatever. So, so smells can sometimes drift far away. Well, so can emotions, the same way as smells do. They tend to dissipate like a smell very closely, but they can also drift. Furthermore, you might be hearing your own inner moods and emotions via the breeze, right? You can just be transferring it to that. Who cares? Uh, it doesn't really matter. The end of the day is when you hear the wind, especially the breezes, those light breezes, you hear a astonishing, profound, incredible things that you didn't hear before. Now, where mm -hmm. they come from, this I'll leave up to you. I'm not going to say necessarily where they come from. For me, it doesn't really matter. Just that experience is so magical. What do I care where it comes from? If it's me, if it's you know remnant emotions drifting on, on the currents of energy, uh, if it's my imagination, who cares? Right? Doesn't matter. You know, I, I'm, I'm quite happy in my madness sometimes. It works for me, right? So we <laughs> mustn't undervalue madness sometimes. It's got lots of value to it. Uh, uh, but this this point of hearing is profound, right? It's to it's in other words, it is to connect to that which is more than we imagine or expect yeah and this is yeah, very profound yeah. this is very very profound it, and isn't you, that you what you a, oh good go ahead go ahead go ahead oh i was gonna say you have a quote in um in the module you know as you're as you're working through them all oh, right 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 there is a particular quote in the module that has always just really grabbed me in this Please read it to us. It, you wrote that vocabulary is a gateway to awareness there you go. What there you were go. just talking about to me, yes. that, just, that just sums that yes. whole thing up. Yes, yes, yes. And, and, and this is absolutely critical here, that we want to understand this, that vocabulary is a gateway mm -hmm. to awareness. So in other words, when we really, like in this case, look here, where we started to pay attention to the words listening and hearing, right? And we took them further. We went in depth. Right, it it yeah. it expanded our awareness. We looked at the implications. We looked at the connections. We looked at the patterns. We looked at the pathways. This is a profound point, Ramsey. I've been trying to get to your comment on anticipation still, and I, I will do so now. I do like to address your comments. And Ramsey says, I think anticipation is related more to external factors and expectations is how we personally are going to deal with those factors. Yes, uh, you know, again, all of these, these terms have nuanced uh, meanings and, and understandings and it's contextual. So depending on the circumstance, this is going to uh, develop. So I can anticipate also based on my own internal factors, for instance, but yes, typically, uh, so we, we, we need to understand that almost always with terms, we've got the typically and a usual, and then we've got the exception, right? And this is very important to understand. Oh, I think somebody's here for me. One moment, one moment. I, I've got to go. All right. All right. Um, so, so hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'll be there in a moment. All right. Sure. Will you please continue as somebody needs to pick up something here? So I have to go. Did you hear, sir? Yes, I am. Sorry. I had my microphone on mute. So we'll just say that we'll be right back. <laughs> um, it's kind of hard to follow up with Syl when, when he's on such a wonderful.
Ramsey, I just read your comment. I would really um, like to see you expand on that just a little bit. Sorry, sure, to have to drop you in the middle there, but hey, I don't want to say no to money. You still there? Oh, yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, when Brilliant. You, well, I was on mute when you when you said you had to go and, you know, how oh. I was on the phone to find the little <laughs> button. Right. And, All right. Well, course, you know, yeah. yeah, that's it. We, we have tolerance. Yes. Yeah. Well, no, it's a yeah. perfect example of anticipation. Um, I was not anticipating anything like that. <laughs> Yeah, and then the unexpected came, and you know, luckily, um, the the person they kind of revved their engine a little bit, and I told the people when they come, uh, it's stuff that I'm selling, you see, and then they come and pick it up on me, and yeah. I said, well, give a little honk, you know, so they must have realized that, so maybe they thought I was still sleeping or something, but they did send me a message, and I didn't respond to it yet because I was so consumed in what we were doing. So anyway, it was a very oh. nice lady, you know, um, a lady about our age uh, and her husband. And they were getting a pickleball set from me. And they're beginners and they're going to start and they're keen and say, well, you know, it helps them save money. It's a good set, it's quality. So anyway, everybody's happy. I love, I love when everybody gets, gets mourners out of something. That makes me very happy. And it's just lovely people, you know. So anyway, it's yeah. just a wonderful, a wonderful interruption. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And, you know, it helps me. Uh, Pay my bills, which is also a great help. So it's all magic all around. You know, I just love magic. I just love magic. And and to get back to what I was saying about the breezes, you know, I, I, I cannot emphasize enough the magic and the power and the importance of doing this. Really make this effort, people, in that early morning time to go outside and pay attention to the breezes and the winds and hear them. You're going to start connecting to the world, the world as an entity, the world as a mourners, the world not merely as matter, as material, but the world that has more to it than what you ever believed possible. Right? Now, now uh, somebody might be a skeptic and say, mm, you know, I'm very scientific. I don't believe in all this woo, -woo stuff and stuff. Uh, you know, whatever, all your magical stuff. Nah, I just think this is a lot of nonsense. And I say to that person, I said, yes, I likewise have the side to me that's very scientific. Yes. However, however, I have come to understand that whether or not the world is as I believe, right, as an actual fact, does not matter to my enjoyment of it as such. Yeah. So I enjoy the world as an entity, as a mourners, as something mm -hmm. that has its own sensibility to it, its own moods, its own energy, etc. As, as, does it matter in the actuality of my experience, whether this is so in actuality or not? No, my experience is, in, in, is just, um, uh, uh, it's magical, whether or not it's yeah. true. I get value out of it, out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, you see, this is what I misunderstood. The lady's name is Janet. My friend Janet is coming after our hour is up and we do capital R readings, which of particular oh. stories and things, right? So which you're welcome to join, sure. And it's not just wonderful, right? So last week I read that story, The Seeds of Goodness story. Right, which I'm sure mm -hmm. we have read to you, right, with the, the ancient one yeah. and the solitary tree. Right. And yes. and this was very profound. But so when this this lady who came for the pickleball set, I saw in my notification, Janet, on our way. I, I didn't see on our way. I just saw the last part there in a few minutes. I thought, oh, Janet's coming kind of early. Well, all right, you can join us, that's fine. But it was this lady, not my friend Janet. So 
<laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. okay. That see, there's always yeah. an explanation. There always is. Um, there's something I wanted to bring up, and it, and this is um, this relates to habits, to anticipation, expectation, etc. What we were what we're talking about our power conceptions, building those habits to me, anyways, is always going to be related to the example you gave of get up in the morning and you know make it a habit, get into a habit of stepping outside and basically just imbibing in the world. Um, that is a very positive power habit, one that can lower and the, the worry, reduce your anxiety, all of that really set your mood. Um, but I like what you wrote in the tasks and exercises, which is to me a very positive habit to get into. Because if you're going to do any of these courses, and this may be a segue for you, but if you're going to do any of these, any of these wave impeccability courses or extended courses, no. I highly recommend paying attention to the tasks and exercises. They're there for a reason. They're not there just for you know extra fill-in. Um, there was something here in one of them that struck me, which is um, a question. Why does our inner self respond more readily to incremental change rather than abrupt and sudden shifts? Um, in my wrote, I wrote that fast does not build a power habit, that habits need repetition, repetition and consistency. Um, without that repetition and consistency, I never would have been able to arrive at the difference between anticipation and expectation. I had to stay at it constantly. I had to keep at these terms and these words until they started to make sense to me and I could work them through, figure them out, and then apply them in a positive habit way to my life, you know, to areas that needed it. So I don't know if any of that made sense, but in a roundabout way, it all connected to me, to um, the wonderful material that I'm sitting here going through as you're talking about. Yes, <laughs> no, that's wonderful. That's absolutely wonderful. <laughs> habit, habit is such a crucial part of all of this. Right, sure. Well, it is. It is. It absolutely is. Especially, you know, like I said, with these tasks and exercises, uh, I'm just looking at them and uh, the questions are amazing. Is your self conception, um, if your self conception has been negative, what will you replace it with? Which is simultaneously positive, realistic, and open to change if needed. So questions like those, when I make a deep habit of really diving deep inside, thinking about things, thinking about my behaviors, my habits, my actions, and my vocabulary. Yes. And so thinking about and all of that, put that together, then yes. I know I, I can step away from that expectation of this was one of my worst ones. In the past, I used to expect of myself, I can't. It won't happen. I never will. All of those very negative, dark terms I was able to eventually switch those over to, well, I am doing this. Um, I, I have doing, done this. I can do it. It is possible. Those kinds of things. Um, just switching everything over and making a habit of that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, too cool. Too cool. Too cool, sir. Too cool. Absolutely wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I, I think I'm going to uh, wrap up there because we've got five minutes and it's just so magical what you're saying. And I want to keep that power of what you were saying. Uh, really cool. So, so um, uh, Norma says, uh, talk amongst ourselves. Yes, I'm sorry to just bail on you guys, but like I was saying, you know, I, I, I don't feel too bad. You know, the necessity, uh, what can you say? Necessity can be a bit of a pressure sometimes. So, so all too wonderful. And, and I do trust yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Ramsey says, I went inside a bit too. Ooh, ooh, that sounds very nice, fun. So what did you see, Ramsey, inside? And show is a good secretary. Yes, yes. <laughs> There's no <laughs> much. Yeah, yeah, very good, very good, very good. Thank you, care of business. Yeah, wonderful. And Norma, Norma also is or can be, uh, among other things, can also be a good secretary, right, Norma? If wonderful. you choose, if you choose. Yes, yes, it's too wonderful. Uh, so this was wonderful. exciting, but I'm, I'm keen to hear what you saw inside when you went inside, Ramsey. I'm assuming you mean it in a in a metaphorical sense, right? 
uh, maybe literally, maybe Ramsey was outside and then he went inside. So that would be a turn up for the books. You know, mostly when people are doing um, Facebook and such, they inside and then go outside. So very cool, very I cool. To, I, I love um, this. I have, I have go one ahead. more statement. Um, please, please, I'm please, yeah, please, you please. To repeat that quote about oh. perceive, receive, and conceive. Ah, and I think you know ah, which quote I'm talking ah, about because I think that's yeah. most appropriate for here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so I will share a little secret, right? I very seldom remember quotes. However, I have developed the ability and the skill to reconstruct them on demand, right? So I don't remember how the original quote goes, but uh, if I reconstruct it because I understand how those three terms are connected, so here's my, here's my quote on that I'm going to make up on the spot. Perception and reception both profoundly affect perception. Beautiful. Right? Beautiful. This is, this is huge. This is huge to understand that how we perceive our reality, how we connect to our reality, is based on this, on how we, we take things into us. And our receptivity is a profound part to this, right? The, I, I quote so, the Sophie and the Philosopher. It's a very cool story, which, mm -hmm. which, which I think, you know what, sir? I think now mm -hmm. when Janet comes, if she comes, she had to go to the vet, so she may not come. But uh, so we'll just, we'll just uh, continue until she does come. But what I think is I'm actually going to read the story of Sophie and the philosopher, right? So uh, conception and, and re uh, reception affect perception. It affects how we see the world. And, and to, to, to say a little lead into the story here before I read the story, and it's one of my favorite stories, um, is that uh, Bina and I were on Zoom one day. We, we hang out a lot uh, on Zoom. And, uh, and then there was a post in which somebody had made, it was one of those viral posts that went around, right? And the post said, uh, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you choose for a year? They said, if you could choose to live anywhere in the world for a year, where would you live? Um, and so they might not even have said the world, they might just have said, if you could choose to live anywhere, uh, for a year, where would you live, right? But I, I took it to mean at the time, the world. So um, what do you think most people said? Um, the typical answers. I mean, it's one of those viral posts, right? And there were just hundreds okay, and hundreds you know, of answers, right? They were so probably the typical... saying things like, you know, Milan, Italy, you know, St. Thomas, any of those places. So... Hawaii, et cetera. Yes, yeah, tropical right. island, blah, blah, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, exactly. The, the things that you would expect the usual. So, uh, so uh, Bina asked me this question and she asked it earnestly. Now, as you know, when you ask me an earnest question, um, you are taking matters into your hands somewhat and there may be some risk involved in a good way <laughs> because you may get a lot more than you were expecting is my point, right? When I'm asked an earnest yep. question, it really does things to me. It pulls out. Ah, brilliant. You were sitting, Ramsey says you were sitting outside. Uh, brilliant. Oh, okay. Okay. Nice, oh, wonderful, Ramsey. That's a, a nice, nice turn up for the books that somebody was outside listening to the breezes, hopefully, right? Yes. Listening to the world, right? Hopefully. Anyway, so, so, so Bina asked me like, well, where would you live if you could choose to live anywhere for a year? And I said, well, I would, for instance, like to live in the Louvre or maybe the New York Stock Exchange or uh, mm. maybe the Museum of Natural History, or maybe oh, I would love to like to live in the White House, or maybe with the monks in Meteora. Uh, and I went on and, I, and I, I, now I'm gonna stop a little bit short because I'm not being asked this question. So the flow isn't quite the same. I'm not being asked earnestly, but I had about 20 different places that were super radically different to the usual. I'm just using those few to illustrate, right? And, and exactly sit with a yogi in India. But now that I've started this pattern and you, you're now jumping out of the pattern of, well, a, a, a desert island or not desert, a tropical island or, you know, some beautiful place like the Riviera or something like that, right? When you jump outside of the norm, you're like, 
wow, you know, if, if I were to live in you know, 10 Downing Street or the White House or, or any of the, um, and then um, like um, um, Bina said, well, maybe live with the mafia for a year. It's like, wow, that would really be interesting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's huge because the idea for me was to not take this as an opportunity to just, well, all right, lay, laze around and have fun and that. You can do that on your own time. But this is an opportunity to learn, to have access to that which you would not otherwise will do. Norma says she'll go with Ramsey to the yogi in India. And you guys can visit yourselves and be your own yogis, please. Be your own yogis. Be your yeah. own yogis. Be your own yogis, really. It, it, it's every yogi who is a yogi is a yogi because they made the effort to be their own yogi. Yes. So be your own yogi. And that's what they're going to tell you. Every yogi who's worth his salt is going to tell you to be your own yogi. Uh, if he doesn't, he's not a yogi. Or she is yeah. not a yogi, right? That's, that's what it's all about, right? I mean, look at what Buddha, the ultimate yogi, what did he say? You must become a Buddha like me. Or not must, but this is your objective, is to become a Buddha. Uh, a Buddha is a title. It's not a person. It's the title of that particular person. Yeah. It's not the only Buddha. And there are other Buddhas, right? Where people know this, right? So it is to, the, the ideal of it is to become a Buddha, to become a yogi. Yogiism is for you to become a yogi. And the only way you're going to do that is to make the effort on your own. So be your own mm -hmm. yogi, please. But anyway, so I rattled off this whole long list of, of, of you know, at least 20 different places i got really into it and you know your brain gets emphasized and stimulated and so uh, but then bina said you know uh what really shook me up and this was a life transformative event for bina she said you know i never even thought of those alternatives i never even considered thinking about them and this shocked her it horrified her that here's this profound question and a profound opportunity and if you'd really been offered this, you may have said, you know, okay, I go to the Riviera or to Hawaii or, you know, wherever, some place on the beach or mountain or whatever, right? Some trivial place. And I never would have considered places like the Louvre or the White House or the New York Stock Exchange or whatever, you know, or the monastery or with the yogi or whatever, right? I never would have considered these radical alternatives, right? And I would have lost out, right? Uh, and, and, and this was something that was profound to her, she said, because her, her lack of thinking in this, it's about perspective shifting, she said, right? And, and, and thinking things through to the end, our two power tools in way of impeccability, our two incredible superpower tools. She said, because I didn't apply them, I lost out and my world was smaller. Right. Let me repeat that, what Bina said. She lost out because she had inadvertently made her world smaller, made her yeah. world smaller. Right? She mm -hmm. was living in a smaller world because simply because she didn't apply these tools of perspective shifting and thinking it through to the end. And this, she said, you know, because we'd been in way of impeccability for a long while already. And she said, yes, you know, she knew the power and value, but not until that day did it really smack her across the head to say, whoa, wake up. This stuff isn't just theoretical. This makes a real difference. It's a massive mm -hmm huge, profound difference, right? And from there, mm -hmm. we get to uh, we get to the story of Sophie and the philosopher. Now, it, it's a forward and a backward story from that moment. So it, it goes all the stuff. So yes, Norma, we'll, we'll chat about uh, history in a moment, right? First of all, if you are going to travel in history, make absolutely sure you've got all your inoculations in order. And secondly, make sure you have either a face mask, a gas mask that is uh, time appropriate that nobody's going to see, or you have nose plugs. Because the one thing that people do not take into account in olden times is the smell, right? People literally yeah. dump their sewage out of the window. When you walked yeah. in the streets, you were walking in sewage for the most part. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So be aware, be aware, right? Um, hygiene and, and, and cleanliness and smell and that stuff just pretty much didn't exist, okay? So you're in for a great, great shock to your nose and your senses when you go back in time, right? And this is why time travel uh, is backwards in time, not very popular, right? Very unpleasant, very miserable. And then when you're dealing with ignorance and superstition and all of this stuff, horrible, right? Okay. 
because that's what you're mostly going to encounter. You may have those few enlightened souls who, who, who made civilization move forward, but for the rest, ignorance, aggression, superiority paradigm, abuse, you know, it's not fun. All right, so just saying, you know, the, the architecture may be nice, but the people, not so much. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so Ramsey says, disassociating from the world to become a yogi is harder these days with all these bills to pay and businesses to run. So need to learn I from this you. person who went through it. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you know, um, this is a matter of not necessarily not having the bills, but not having the connection to the bills, which is a different thing. Right, let me repeat that. Mean? It's not the bills that are the issue. It's your connectivity to the bills, which keeps you bound to them. Yeah. All right. So the two monks were working along the, 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 the road and they came to a river that was a bit flooded. Not, not terribly so. And there was this lady and she's going to a wedding, right? And she's all dressed up in the wedding. Uh, she may even have been the bride or whatever, but nonetheless. And she didn't want to get her dress ruined for the wedding. And she says, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit late. If I don't cross this, you know, I can't wait for it to go down. I'll miss the wedding. And she was in, in real stress and turmoil, right? And to go. So she says, could you please give me a, a lift? So, of course, the younger monk says, no, we're monks. We're, not, we're forbidden to touch women, blah, blah, right? The older monk just picks up the woman, slings her over his shoulder, walks across the water, puts her down and continues walking. And, of course, the younger monk is like apoplectic. His eyes are just popping out of his head. Uh, he, he's so outraged at this, he can't even speak for a couple of miles, right? And then finally, he, he says something, but, 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 you know, uh, you, you picked up that woman, and he starts going on about this. And the older monk just walks and nods and listens. And eventually, they keep walking mile after mile after mile, and they've walked, I don't know, 50 miles or however far they worked. Anyway, they walked a long place. And eventually, the older monk says, you know, I put that down at the woman. That woman, I put her down at the, the other side of the river. But you, you're still carrying her. Yeah. Really? So pay your bills and get done. Don't don't keep carrying those bills okay. with you. That, that's oh, okay. Point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know they are binding on you, uh, Ramsey. But there's a bind that like that, that woman carrying, it didn't bind the older monk. It only bound the younger monk because he stayed attached to it. So pay your bills. If you can't pay them, you know, you say, well, I'm doing what I can like right now. I can't pay my bills this moment. Right? But when the time it comes to pay them, well, then I'll have the money. I have no idea where it's going to come from. I hope it's going to come. I'm making every effort to put things into place where it can come, but I have to trust. I've done everything I can. I have to trust. But I have to let go and unhook from the attachment, which is the worry, the concern, the perpetual thinking, the same thought over and over and over. Me thinking about mm -hmm. that bill more isn't going to make it any more or less paid, right? All it does is suck mm -hmm. my energy and take my energy away from the energy that worries. is needed to actually do something about paying the bill, yes? Right, and then we get right. more worried and more anxious. Exactly, exactly. And that limits us to opportunity. For instance, I know the story of this wonderful, marvelous lady, right? Now, this lady's got like a granny vibe going on. All right, and that's a good thing. So, but she's got responsibilities and she's got bills. So one day her tires are in need and she's got her tires are all a mess and they're not working. And, and, and she has to get her tires into, but she can't afford this, right? And so she ends up at the tire place and they tell her, well, you have to have new tires, right? And she says, oh my goodness, but I can't afford this new tires. I'm really not. And because she wasn't attached to it, she says, well, it is what it is and it's going to happen the way it happened. And you know, if I can't pay for it, I can't buy tires, I can't buy tires. I have to drive, drive on, the, on the bad tires, whatever. But then magic happened because she was open and she wasn't associated to the worry. She wasn't limited. She wasn't closed. She didn't get stuck in this bubble of worrying about it and saying, oh, woe is me. The world is going to end, you know? And I have this. So she was open. And because she was open, magic happened in that moment there in that tire store. This manager says to her, oh, don't worry, I'll just give you the tires and you can pay me later. Didn't even take her full name. Yeah, just knew her first name. Lo and behold, they put the tires on and off she drives. She, she could never have come back and mm, there would have been no consequence to it. Yeah, 
However, when she did get her money come in, she used her rent money to go and pay that manager. Even though it made her late on her rent, she wanted to honor that magic of that gift. Yeah? So my point is here, if you are attached to things, the world works according to those attachments. However, when you start unhooking from them, the world can surprise you and work in mysterious ways. Now, the world isn't going to do this to you every day. Why? Because the world doesn't want to indulge you and say, ah, if I just keep giving you stuff, you're going to become lazy. Yeah, and then you're just gonna lie there, and you know you're gonna become a, a, a one of those walruses, right? And do nothing yeah. all the time. Yeah, and that's no good. You need to learn. You need to grow. This is the point of it all, right? It's not necessarily that you need to work. That's not the issue. You don't need to struggle either. That's not the issue either. What you do need to do is raise your awareness, enhance your awareness, develop your awareness, right? That's is the point of life. So my mm -hmm. point is, if we get a consumed in this obsession with worry and anxiety, in other words, we'll never grow and we'll miss those magical learning growth opportunities that this wonderful lady had. Now, I may be paraphrasing the story and getting it a bit mangled there, right, sir? But this is not a <laughs> theoretical story like the monks working. This is a very real story. And this wonderful lady, you know, has got the granny vibe, of course, is wonderful, sure, right here. This happened to sure, <laughs> like, like what, two, two, three weeks ago or, you know, recently, right? This is a real story. Yeah. This really happened. This is like blew my mind. It's like this guy just, you know, it's like $700 worth of tires. He said, okay, pay me later. And she could never have come back. Her integrity made her come back, of course, right? But this is yes. an incredible thing. Incredible thing, right? Yeah. So when we my unhook from... And... Exactly. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I was going to say my integrity, but also just the idea that I had been given such a gift that I, it, it would have been like laughing the universe in the face or giving it exactly. the finger exactly and I know exactly back and honored exactly my word. exactly 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 so the universe said to you you see there are different ways that things can be done don't assume that you know how the world works to get back to my point about going and listening and hearing capital h hearing capital l listening to the breezes in the morning the object of that exercise is not only the profound connectivity to nature you are going to experience, but the shift in your belief system, your understanding system, your ideas, your narrowness of, of view of how things work. That's my point, right? Not necessarily nature. Just once you realize that, oh, this isn't what I expected it to be. Now you can extrapolate that and extend it and say, mm, maybe the rest of the world doesn't exactly work the way I think it does. Yeah, like in, in yeah. Sure's case with the tires. In that moment, you were open to the world not working the way you think it does. Yes? Right. And it did. It exactly. did. Right? Now, you weren't, you weren't expecting, you were just stating the fact is, well, you know, I can't afford this, sorry. You know, when they told you you needed new tires and how much it was. Yeah. Right. And then yeah. there was that, you know, and you didn't lament, you didn't moan, you didn't curse, you didn't weren't looking for sympathy or pity or any of this nonsense. You were just simply yeah. being truthful and honest and, you know, sorry, I know I need tires, but I can't get them. Right. And then the world yeah. changed and helped you out. Right. And it was just an object yeah. lesson. Now, of course, this is not necessarily going to happen every time. It's not the point yeah. of the universe's <laughs> gift. The point wasn't to say, oh, you can get gifts like this every time. The point was that they can happen. Exceptions can happen, right? And the world yes. does not work the way we think it does. It can work differently. Now, in that case, did you absolutely have to have to have to need and have those tires? No, you know, it wasn't that absolutely end of the world. However, so when, when it is, though, when you absolutely do need and you really, truly are stuck and it's truly a life and death matter, then you can maybe call on your powers to bring you what you otherwise cannot get. Yes? Yeah. 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 So yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, it's, a, it's a good thing to be aware of, right? It's not a power to yeah. abuse, but it's a power to have in reserve. Yes? Right. Well, Never to rely on. Yeah, I mean, they were they were offering me a, a pretty substantial discount if I got all four and yeah. I needed, really needed at least two new tires. Yeah, the other yeah, two exactly. were definitely bald. 
<laughs> exactly. Um, exactly. But it's, it's one of those things. It's like, well, okay. Yeah. The, wor the, yeah. the worst they can do is say no. Yeah. Um, it because I said, yeah. if um, you know, I can't afford these, but if you want to offer me a line of credit, sure, I can because my I don't have the kind of credit that you're looking for. So, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Um, we just went from there. You know. Wonderful. I, I was Wonderful. really happy. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. So uh, I want to read the. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can yeah. say yeah. We all do. Yeah, you know, it is what it is. You know, and 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 what I've noticed is that our bills tend to uh, seem to fit the level of our income somehow. What can uh, I tell you? Sometimes, well, anymore. <laughs> though, I mean, yeah. The, yeah. With the way the U.S. economy is going, we are really. Uh, yeah. we're starting to get into a bit of a, a pickle here. So, yeah. Yeah. What can you do though? You know, I mean, this is something that's just part of life. And, you know, I mean, I heard this when I was a kid and every, I've never heard people say, oh, you know what? This is fantastic. I don't need to worry about bills. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's just, just part of the deal. It's part of the deal. You know, our yeah. life is, our life is. Yeah. I, I, all I'm saying is that just, just because you have problems, doesn't mean that you must ignore them. I'm not recommending that, but I'm simply saying, don't be consumed with your problems. Don't make them the all of your life, right? And this is the secret of yoginess. It is to unhook from these things consuming you. Yes, you can still have yeah. them in your life, but they don't consume you. Right. So yeah, that's very powerful. All right. Oh, that's not the file I want to bring up. Uh, this was where we at in this vocabulary and power conceptions. I want to read the story of Sophie and the philosopher because of that quote, okay. right? And and that quote was again, the three core words. Oh, uh, it had to do with perceive, receive, and uh, conceive, conceive, receive, and perceive. Correct. So how we conceive and how we receive uh, uh -huh. affects how we perceive right so how yes, we yes. Our, our ability to conceive our ability to be receptive is our ability to shape our reality affects that yes. all right so here we go yes. here we go you ready ramsey you ready norma you read your story i enjoy reading the stories i, I really become a lot better at it because i practice so we need to practice things people you need to practice don't assume you can or cannot do unless you've practiced you won't have any idea of how much you can or cannot do you can't gauge yeah, by your initial um, efforts and attempts. See, yeah? To me, can't is, in the, it, can't is that equivalent of expectation. Right? Exactly, exactly. And, and it's an expectation which is based on insufficient data. Yes. Sorry, you're making an assumption, you're making a, a conclusion based on insufficient data. Unless you've actually practiced and made real sincere effort, you're not going to know, right? So, um, Here's the story, Sophie and the philosopher. Sophie encountered an idea, an idea which enveloped her soul. Sophie encountered the idea of a philosopher, a philosopher who would invite her to learn with him. Sophie's dream became real. Her intent, her desire manifests, materializes as the philosopher actually comes into her life, really does invite her to learn with him. Wow, exhilarates Sophie as she jumps on her bed in joy. My dream has happened. It's here in my life. For real. Her mom comes to investigate. What's going on? Nothing. I'm just excited. Exhales Sophie, struggling to contain herself. Nothing except dreams can come true. Intense can materialize. Sophie continues jumping for a while because this is beyond imagining the incredibleness of what's transpired. The philosopher she has manifested has asked her to be in connection with him and learn philosophy and share with him her journey. Wow, what a dream come true. But then Sophie says, but wait, wait, wait. I am Sophie. Sophie is short for sophisticated. Sophie, sophisticated. Same name. I am Sophie. I am sophisticated. I am Sophie the sophisticated. Wait, wait, wait. The philosopher has invited me to learn and partake in learning and growing and knowledge and expansion and awareness and, and, and intent and all these magical things. But 
I know I know little. I also know I am more. One thing I am not going to do is be influenced by the philosopher. Nope, 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 nope. That's why I am Sophie the Sophisticated. I will not be influenced. However, I cannot be blind to the moreness the philosopher promises. Now, I am going to be receptive. I am going to take for granted what the philosopher has to share makes sense. Sophie is emphatic, liking and understanding emphasis. I am going to be open to seeing beyond what I can see now. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. I know my imagination is limited. I know my knowledge is limited. I'm going to trust the philosopher makes sense. I'm going to trust without trusting. I'm going to trust it makes sense. But this does not mean I am Sophie the Sophisticated. That just because it does make sense, it does not mean I have to be influenced. No, I do not have to be. I can choose to be. Not only can I choose to, but I have to choose. I have to choose to decide whether or not I wish to take on what I know. So I am never influenced. So that it's always my choice what I absorb, make it my own, what I make my own, even if it might be all of it, doesn't matter. Always it needs to be a choice. This is Sophie's sophistication, her profound receptivity. She is never influenced. She always does maintain her independence of being, yet she changes profoundly at the same time. What a magical story. But now there's a bit more to the story. Sophie and the philosopher, they chat about everything. They become very, very close. They grow into each other's hearts. They become more than just Sophie and the philosopher. They become sophistication. They become philosophical sophistication. They become more in this profound intimacy of their souls and spirit. Then... They discover on a day. They asked, what are we? They ask themselves, what are we? As they ponder and think, they realize, oh, we are characters in a story. Wow, wow. <laughs> this is a surprise. We are characters in a story. Dang, dang. Now somebody who heard this said, oh, this is dreadful. That's a terrible thing. Others who heard this said, hmm, that's interesting, that's surprising, that's a twist. Yeah. What do you do now? But Sophie and the philosopher, they were sophisticated philosophers, philosophers of sophistication itself. They said, ah, if we are characters and we are aware we are characters, does this not mean we can write our own story? And then... Sophie and the philosopher set about writing their own story from that moment on. The end. True story. Mm -hmm. That's a true story. True story. The, the only true story I could think of is that it would be, um, I, I don't know, you and, and anytime I've ever heard it, I always thought it was the story of Bina. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a true story. It really is a true story. You know, this is how Bina came one. to be connected with me. Yep. Bina had, there yeah. is a story called, um, uh, what is this The story called? Uh, it's the, the character's name is Sophie. And there is a philosopher in the story. It's written by a Norwegian uh, author. Um, uh, dang it, I forget the name of the story now. Uh, somebody remind me of this story. Uh, it's a it's a very well known book. You know, it was translated into many. Um, uh, yeah. Um, uh, anyway, so this the story. She'd read the story, and this is a story of this girl Sophie who is can is contacted by this philosopher, and they start this this um, correspondence, right? And then the story develops from there, and 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 he invites her to to partake in this mm -hmm. exploration of philosophy through the ages, right? 
Now, so it has some similarities, but this idea grabbed Bina's imagination, like in the start of the story. Yeah. She said, wow, this is such a cool idea, right? And then I had, this was right at the very beginning mm -hmm. of Wave Impeccability. I was looking for some beta testers to, because to, I don't want to just put something out unless you've tested it. To me, this is just arrogant, right? You got to test things. So I put an ad out for beta testers and somehow I don't even know if we were friends or if, if we were friends, how we came to be friends, but, but somehow the universe intervened and Bina actually saw this notification that I made asking for things. And then she said, well, I'd be interested, but you know, I can't afford it, nothing. And then I said to Bina, well, you know what? There are many different ways to pay for things. See the world did, Bina reached out, even though she knew she had no money, she reached out anyway yes because mm -hmm. uh, at that time she, she had no idea why i mean it made no sense for her to reach out right she didn't think that she could do it but then i came back in a way that said oh you know what the world doesn't necessarily work the way you think it does and i invited her into the program and said there's other ways you can pay for it right you don't have to always pay in money right many ways to pay for things and from there right. this started and once she'd done the program i invited her to stay and say, look, you know, you're welcome to come anytime you like. And she just said, well, I'm going to take advantage of this with both hands and both feet and grab on with all 10 fingers and arms and legs and everything, right? And she said, I'm going to take advantage of this. I was made this fantastic offer and I'm going to take advantage. And she has, and she still is. And of course, it's to my benefit, magically, right? In the same way as I, I get benefit out of anybody I interact with. Look at the magic I get from shirts, unbelievable, right? So there's more than one way to look at things, right? It's not the one-sided thing. It's always two sides, always two sides. And this, this, this receptivity though, this is something that as we came along and through the story and you know, the story of where we want to live and all of these things, right? This concept of receptivity, it's a profound concept of wave impeccability. We want to be maximally receptive. And if we take that a little bit to its end extreme, what this means for Sophie is that she assumes that what is being said makes sense, right? That she said. So if we take this and when I hear things, if I don't get it, if I don't understand it, or what happens usually, I like, uh, you know, that doesn't make sense to me and I start to throw it away. Now, consider what happens if you start to connect to something that is outside of the range and the sphere and the boundaries of your knowledge and awareness. Is that automatically not going to make sense to you? Simply because it is outside of you. It's other, it's different, yeah? Therefore, if we truly want to learn to learn, we have to learn to put stuff on hold before we make these assessments and judgments as to their value. So, and now I say, well, okay, I'm going to be open. The problem with being open is, is that we cannot evaluate things from inside. And this is the only way to truly evaluate things, to give it its full and complete and fair shake, right? So in other words, if I want to evaluate your case as a lawyer, right? I may look at your case and say, oh, this is horrible. You've got no chance here. But let me take your case on as your lawyer and start to argue it from your side. Now, suddenly the case looks a lot better. Yeah. Oh, now I say, well, actually, maybe you do have a case. Yeah. So this is what receptivity is. It is... It is taking on the thing as if it is valid, as if it makes sense. Note well, as if. But you aren't mm -hmm. just going to like that lawyer say, well, uh, let me take your thing on as if it was a good case. No, you really got to give it your full stick and say, well, I'm your lawyer now. So now it's my duty and obligation to, to, to give you this full maximum value of assuming your case has merit, right? I have to just act uh, act like it has really has merit not even as if and that way i get really inside it and now you fire up the nodes and the nodes start seeing this that oh but you missed this you missed that oh you know what actually now you've got a better case than you thought you have but only will i see that moreness once i'm receptive to it right so that receptivity is to insist that it does make sense as a starting point and then work backwards from there Right? If I say, oh, this makes sense, for instance, reverse engineering alien technology, when the spaceship lands, crashes, 
we reverse, we have no idea how the technology works, but we know it did work because the spaceship was flying, right? And so, uh, so we now say this has to work, even though I haven't got a clue how, it must work somehow. And then you start to figure out how. When we do this with thought, with conception, with understanding, this is a powerful skill for us to step outside of the narrow boundaries of our narrow puny little minds. Yes? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, so this is very, very key for receptivity. Absolutely critical, right, right. Uh, so reciprocity, this is not a fan, uh, uh, something that, that, this is a different term, not, not receptivity, it's not, not reciprocity. Reciprocity is saying you give and I give back to match, right? Uh, yes, but a totally different term. I'm talking about receptivity. Uh, which means I'm receptive, I'm open completely and fully, but more than just being open in capital R receptivity, I'm assuming the thing makes sense. I'm going to insist it makes sense, not even assume, I'm going to insist it makes sense and then operate there and reverse engineer back from there. We have to be very careful of this to just dump tracks here now because it's a totally different term, right? Uh, yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm glad you enjoyed the story. It is a good story. It's a fun story. It's a nice little twist on the end there, right? That sort of surprises one. Um, um, but I wanted to say that, um, um, oh, okay, you're going to catch it on the playback. Yeah, no problem. We're going to leave in a moment anyway. I just want to tie up this with re reciprocity. This is the idea that if I give or you give me something, I need to give something back to balance it. This is to be reciprocal. It's about the balance of giving, balance of receiving. And it's, it's, not, it's not entirely always the best method of going things. If I give you a gift, I give it freely. I don't expect anything in return. If I do expect something in return, I'm not giving you a gift, but I'm putting, uh, oh, oh, I see. Yeah, but there's no reciprocity between being and I. This is what I'm trying to illustrate here, uh, Ramsey. It, you may assume so, and this is typically how the world works. But it's a free gift from me to Bina, and she gives a free gift back to me. Reciprocal means there's some kind of a contractualness to it, and that in further implies some kind of an obligation. Bina's under no obligation whatsoever to give me anything whatsoever, or show or any of the other participants, none, zero. I have no expectation of gaining or getting anything from them. My joy is in the giving not in what I get back. What I get back, because it's freely given, freely shared, it's bonus, 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 and therefore mourners, right? I'm totally un unhooked, unconnected, un untainted by this concept of reciprocity, because that's contractual. And to me, this is about the pure magic of giving. I never, ever want my giving to be contractual. And this is to me how love is too. We see love as reciprocal when no. To me, love is pure. It's giving, 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 right? What I receive has no relation to what I give, none whatsoever. That's a bonus that is completely separate from my joy of the love that I give. So I get joy from love as a give and I get joy from love as a receive. But the two do not have to go together. It's nice when they do, it's profound, it's awesome, it's wonderful when they do, but they don't have to, yeah? When our loving is free, in other words, if I want to love unconditionally, that's really what it means. There's no contract, there's no obligation. I love, I give it, you do whatever you like with it. You can squander it, you can waste it, you can throw it away, you don't have to respond to it. Doesn't make any difference to my love, right? I mean, how do you know what the tree does with the love that you give to the tree, right? Yeah, but again, uh, Ramsey, yes, Gaining knowledge and giving knowledge, it, 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 they both happen simultaneously. And it, because they are both happening simultaneously, we can assume that they are tied to each other, that they reciprocal, that there's a contract of some kind. But to me, in, at least in my system, right, I make every effort to not have this be so. Because otherwise, you start ending up with obligations and expectations. And that's the death of relationship. My number one rule for relationships is no expectations and no obligations. Of course, as much as possible, right? But if you can have a relationship like in my relationship with Bina or Sher, there's no expectations from Sher. You don't have to do anything. 
you, you know, there's no obligations to do anything. She's free. Whatever she wishes to do, she's completely and utterly free to do, right? And that takes a great load of things, right? I mean, yes, uh, you know, you may set the schedule and, you know, there's an expectation you'll meet the schedule, but of course, sometimes you can't either. And okay, you know, stuff happens, life happens. So this is a great freedom, a great freedom, right, Cher? This this whole yes. psychology, it's a sophisticated, nuanced psychology, Ramsey. It goes beyond what seems to be the obvious. Simply because there's gain and give doesn't mean that they are tied to each other. They exist independently. Mm -hmm. We assume that tie and that causes lots of troubles. Of course, it's very handy for people who are insecure to say, oh, I'm loving you and you've got to love me back. Well, that's insecurity and you want to be loved. So now you're loving in order to be loved back. You're looking to make a contract. No, I don't want to be bound by such contracts. I want my love to be free and I want your love to be free. Yes, both ways. Right? Freeze everybody yes. up. Yeah, right, sure. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Big point, big point. All right, I Absolutely. think on that note, unless you have something to add in closing there, I think we end right wow. there. This is a very magical place to end on, yes? I think so too. Oh, and then yeah, next very week, powerful. Pick up and move on, right? Yes, 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 right. yes, yes. Ah, uh, Norma, Norma, thank you, yes. I think it yes. would be really awesome for anybody who was listening to uh, maybe post in the comments a little bit what they what they pulled out of this session today it was yes. Important to them. yes i would love to hear that 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 that's great yeah. and we will respond we will respond we absolutely, absolutely always respond to to when people share in in comments you know when they listen to the replays in other words so mm -hmm. very cool very cool very cool. Yeah. So take care, both of you, Ramsey and Norma. And always, as always, I, I love that you guys come here. So uh, will it be available to read, um, Norma? I'll make it available to you. I'll email it to you. It's not a story I have published. And uh, it's it's a story that's very dear to my heart because, yes, it, it, it is a story not only of Vina, but it is also the story of Norma. It is also the story of Sher and every other participant. Mm -hmm. Right, right, sure. In an yes. abstract sense, right? So yeah. it, it's not, it's, you know, it's not particular to anyone, which is why it's very precious to me. Um, those people who are precious to me, you know, like you, Norma, and like you, sure. Well, and Ramsey is becoming precious to me too. You know, the supplies, the supplies. So, yeah. So I hope you don't mind, Ramsey, that you're becoming precious. <laughs> <laughs> I know Sorry, some yeah. might, some men might take offense to that, but well, too bad. Yeah, no, too bad. All right. Thank you, Ramsey. Thank you. Thank you. And bye-bye, everybody. All right. So let me okay. click end here. We'll talk to you soon. And, yes. All right. But you don't have to go, but if you want to, no oh, worries. I do. I've got right. you know I me. Gotcha. I've got the okay. little one back here in the background. So okay. okay. I got you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, sure. Bye-bye. So wonderful. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.